What's up guys, Spencerator here, back after like two months, finally, I know, I, yeah, this is a long-awaited Game Maker tutorial, I understand. And today we're going to be doing a character select screen, much like you'd seen a lot of multiplayer versus style games, um, Mortal Kombat, uh, Smash Bros, probably more like Smash Bros or Mario Kart actually, where all of your characters will be laid out in like a little arrangement, and you can click one of them, whatever, and that's your character that you get to play as. Um, so first things first, make sure you have five sprites, four sprites for the four choices we're going to be working with in this tutorial, and a sprite for a button that we're going to use to get to the next screen. Then you're going to have a bunch of objects, we're just going to do two players, and we're not really going to give them any movement code, we're just going to kind of have them be a placeholder that'll, that, so we can test that they actually do adopt the sprite that we're trying to assign them. Uh, that's that's the main idea of this tutorial, is just to get the, uh, the whole um, sprite transferring uh, engine down, and then you can go ahead and you can uh, add in things that control animation and things that control the player. So anyways, just have two players and make sure that you have an, uh, a controller for the select. So C underscore select, so a controller that will hold the values of the selections. And then have the select options down here as four separate objects if you're having four selections. Otherwise, if you have more, you can do that and it just gets a little bit more complicated, but it's still the same engine. So if you guys want to mess around with it after I finish showing you guys, that's good. Now, before I begin, I want to give a shout out to Game Master Junior. Um, he's been very patient with me for the two months since he suggested this tutorial um, because I've, been, I've had technical difficulties and I haven't had time thanks to workload at school and everything. Um, so I really haven't had time to get to this uh, between, again, technical, technical difficulties and workload, um, schoolwork and whatnot. So I really haven't had time or chances to get to this tutorial, but now I'm, I've sat down and I've done this and it's not hard at all. It'll take you guys like 15 minutes. I just have to explain everything as I do it. Alright, so after you have your sprites, make sure you have all these objects and we're going to start with the, the select options because that's going to be our first order of business. They're going to have two events. We're going to make it so that we have uh, when you left click, you assign player one sprite and when you right click, you assign player two sprite. Uh, if you want, you can make controllable um, cursors that like you control with the, the WASD and arrow keys um, and then you press enter when it's colliding with one of them or whatever but that's another thing we're just gonna be simple and have the mouse so go to your mouse events and I might have done some tutorials with this or not but just make sure you have the left button and right button for your events um, that means you're click basically it means you're clicking on the object uh, it, can, it can get a little bit more complicated than that but I can explain that in a different tutorial. So we're going to have this kind of, this code, up, this is the uh, left button, right? Yeah, okay, I want to make sure. Left button, we're going to have this code, ini underscore open, and then we're going to create a file called select, oops, selection dot ini. And what this code does is it opens a file. Now this is an ini file. I don't know what ini stands for, but it's something that it opens during the game kind of like a side thing during the game. It doesn't really, it, you you don't see it open, but it opens, like, it reaches into a file, and if, if the file doesn't exist, it creates a file, and it'll, gra it'll what it'll do is it, it, you can you can record and um, retrieve data from a file like this in-game using objects and stuff, and this is really great because you can make save systems and you can do things like that with this, and I'll probably do a tutorial on INI files on its own so that you guys can get a better understanding of what these are, but just go with that right now and I can explain it as we go as best I can. So we're going to have this next code, INI write real. So this is how you actually put a value in an INI file, and we're going to have, and what, what there's a little like uh, the little arguments down here. Section, this is a section of the file. Now again, this is a, a non-existent file right now, so this is going to be creating it as it goes. So we're going to have player one as a section. So this holds all the stuff for player one, the information for that. Then we're going to go to the, the uh, key, we're going to call it sprite. So this is the next set of information. So kind of like if you have like your chapter and then your, you know, so like chapter 1.2, so lesson two, you know, that's kind of like, like that, reading it that way. And then you have a value. Now, originally I thought that it could only be numbers, but I was going to take a gamble and put a variable in or a value of like a sprite or something, and it actually did work. So just put spr underscore choice one since we're in S 
since we're in the object for choice one. And then we're going to go ini underscore close so that we're not having the ini file open and it's lagging up our game. And oops, to make this engine so much faster, just highlight it. Control C to copy, and then we're going to basically copy it and make some changes in each one of these objects in the left and right button events. So, uh, Control V, and we're just going to change this to Player Two because the right button is going to assign Player Two. And, and again, I'll get into more detail on how this is going to work later on, and you're going to see how amazingly this comes together, and it's great. All right, so OBJ underscore underscore choice two. Sorry about that. Uh, left button. So this can this assigns the object player, uh, player one, control V to paste, and we're just going to change sprite choice one to choice two, and then we're going to add the right mouse event and control V, and then player two and choice two. So as you can kind of see, I'm just changing values a little bit, and it's pretty simple, really. After you understand what the code does in the first one. Uh, you basically just kind of copy it and change it up a little bit in each of the events and objects. So I'm just going to continue doing this and probably blather on about something. Uh, so choice three, because we're an object choice three. Uh, and then player two's code. Yeah, this is so fun. Not really. So after choice four, we'll get into the next thing, and it gets even more interesting from here. Okay, player one, choice four, and... Player two, choice four. Okay, so now we have all of our choice objects done. Next, what we want to do is object button because that's another thing from our first room. In our create event, we're going to make it make it tell you a message so you know just in case you're not sure, you know, so or maybe you have someone else playing your game whatever for whatever reason and you want to have you you want to make sure that they know what they have to do. So show message um left click is is player 1 and right click is player two. So that's going to be uh, our message that's going to show the player so that they know what which one is which for clicking on the the uh, choices for character selections so that they know which one they're choosing and who's choosing what when. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is have um, when you click on this guy, we're going to go to the next room. So room, go to next, double parentheses, and semicolon. And that's basically just going to send it to the next room. As you can see, if I click on the sprite, it says next room. So it's a button for the next room, basically. Now that we have that, we're going to have in our controller object for the selections, we have to have a create event, and it will retrieve from the INI file we created. Uh, the values of the sprites for that we that we're gonna transfer to the players. You want to have this guy create first. So actually, when 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 you're making your room, really quick, when you make your room one, make sure you put your controller for the selections in before you put in these guys. That way, he'll be created first out of all these objects, and that way the the variables he's created with already exist, so that these guys aren't looking for a non-existent variable. Um, when they're created before he is. Just a little fun fact there. Alright, so back to controller for the selections. We're going to have in this create event, ini underscore open, so you're familiar with that code, and then selection dot ini semicolon. Then, whoops, then we want to have global dot choice one so this is going to be the choice that assigns um, the sprite to the player and you'll see that the player one anyways and you'll see that in a second equals ini 
read whoops what I do there we go real and same thing we we put we typed in for the I and I write in the uh, in the selection uh, objects player one is the is the section sprite is the key and we're gonna have a default value of SPR underscore choice one Oops. so that's a default value so if it can't find anything in there it'll have a default value to fall back on that way you don't get an error message it's great then global dot choice two equals let's just copy this and paste it And just change this player two, and let's give a default of choice two, and then just i and i underscore close, so it's not still running in your game and glitching stuff up. Now to make sure that the players uh, adopt the sprites they're assigned, in obj underscore player one, create event, and sprite index equals global dot choice one. Whoops. And let's just copy that and make a create event in obj underscore player two and copy the, or paste the code in and just change the one to a two and we're good. So as you can see, we just finished our engine and we're gonna test it in just a minute. So let's just go over what we did. We created these choice guys, and that's so that when you click on them, they keep a value in an INI file that is a, the value of a sprite. And that sprite is going to be grabbed by this controller for the selections when he's created. He's going to be created, and those two global variables are going to hold the values of those sprites because they're going to reach in that INI file, the exact same INI file, the exact same locations in that INI file grab the values out and store them inside this object. Then these two objects are which are going to be created after this one in that room are going to reference those variables and take sprites um, based on that. So go ahead and run your game and you'll see that this actually works. So it creates back up and it takes a bit to compile. I feel like GameMaker 8 compiled faster. They say that this compiles faster but I don't know. I guess it just seemed faster than a little fun looking loading bar up here floating in the middle of space I guess and this game maker closed and everything I guess it just seems longer because it has this little doing all these processes and all that good stuff anyways there we go alright so is it gonna show the message yep left click is player one right click is player two and you have all your little guys up here. Let's have player one be red, so left click on red, and player two be green. Let's right click on green and next room, and sure enough, player one is red and player two is green. And just to clarify that that did work, and I didn't just like randomly choose a sprite that they're secretly assigned or something, let's play it again and assign different sprites and show that it really does work. So this time, let's make them both blue. So as soon as it loads up, I'll click both on the blue one so you can see that they'll both turn blue. And any minute now. It's usually a little faster the second time. Because it's already dealt with the system so it knows what it's dealing with. Alright, there we go. And it's going to show the message again. Yep. So let's just go click, click, and they're both blue. So it works, which is amazing. Uh, and it's nice and easy and you guys can mess around with it all you want you know you can make animated sprites or even it would be tricky have a sprite for the selection screen and then have a different sprite that it'll access and save to the I and I file so that like you know maybe you have like a ninja you make a nice picture of a ninja and then have a little ninja sprite that actually moves and everything and have it save that ninja sprite that moves to the um, I and I file instead of the, just this little smiley face block guy and you can do that and have the player reference all kinds of stuff like that make the players move around whatever you want to do but um, above all make sure to make sure to leave a comment if you need any help with this um, 
like this video because that helps out a ton and make sure to subscribe to my channel if you have not uh, and hopefully I'll get some more videos up uh, soon so I'll, without further ado I'll see you guys in a future tutorial and yeah thanks for watching